Warriors, good morning from Commander Naval Service Force U.S. Pacific Fleet. I'm Force Master Chief Carlson and coming to you from the Medal of Honor Courtyard within Surf Pack. I wanted to offer my sincere congratulations to all the new Chief Petty Officers this year. I'm inspired and reinvigorated every year uh, when we start the season. We've had Chiefs in our Navy for 128 years and you're joining just an incredible community as you take on this challenge. Through the next couple of weeks, you're gonna be going through some training. We're gonna be using our teaching the creeds to reinstill those values. We're gonna be covering leadership and advocacy, tradition and trust, character and competence. As I reflect on those, I often think about my time at sea and how I'm very prideful to take ships to sea with sailors that I trust. It's just so important to keep everyone safe. And I would just offer you to reflect on your own service at sea within the service forces and think about how important it is that level of trust that we have for both the sailors that we're here to support and the leadership in which we're here to maintain and, and work on our ships for. So once again, shipmates, congratulations and welcome to the mess. I am ENCS Joanna Medina. I will be going over character and competence and how it relates to teaching to the creed. Character is the most important leadership C. If your character is flawed, your leadership will be flawed. Select, be true to yourselves, and stick to your morals. Good luck on the rest of your season. Navy Chief, Navy Pride. I'm here today to talk a little bit about the difference between a accepted Chief Petty Officer and an E7. And the big difference is credibility. To have that credibility as a chief petty officer, you have to have been accepted, tried, initiated, and those types of things are important because you build that relationship with your brothers and sisters in the chief's mess. You develop that trust and confidence that you're able to do and perform your duties. We are the only force that, out of the branches of service that has this particular establishment. The pay grade is E7. But a chief petty officer, someone who's accepted, who's tried and becomes part of a fraternity, is only part of the Navy. And that's what makes becoming a chief petty officer so special. A quick sea story, um, back when I served with the Marines, my last tour I was, uh, I was a chief and I was attached to a unit. And the gunny reached out to me and says, hey, chief, can you talk to the chief of 8th Marines and have him ask their gunny for this piece of equipment that they needed. And I said, sure, not, why not, but why don't you just ask the gunny? And he says, well, we don't do it like that in the Marine Corps. Gunny to gunny is not a thing. Uh, we always use the chiefs to get stuff done because we know that you guys have that chief fraternity thing going. And I thought that was odd, but I said, okay, no problem. So I, I called over to 8th Marines. I talked to the chief, who I'd never met before. I said, hey, I need this. And he's like, yep, no problem, I'll go ask gunny. Uh, for that, and he went and got the stuff that we needed, and that was just a prime example of how the chief's mess is so powerful in the Navy that we can work with each other, not even knowing each other, but because of that bond we have. We take a lot of pride in our accepted chiefs. We all need to have and know our position in the organization. Just like a team of sled dogs or a team of draft horses, we all need to be pulling in the same direction to accomplish what we need to do. Now each of those members of those teams are in the position they're supposed to be in because of the strengths they possess and what they provide to the team to help support each other and move forward and continue with that mission. So our responsibility to our comrades and their responsibilities to us is to be there to support each other, to back each other up and make sure that we can accomplish the mission, do what we need to do to get home. So some things to take away from this whole season and the whole process and the chief's mess, whether you are accepted or not, is that the chief's mess is there to help support you. No one expects you to do anything alone. I'm MMC Flanagan, and I'm here today to talk to you guys about humility and interpersonal relationship and how it pertains to teaching to the creed. Being humble is one of the most important things because you never want to forget where you, where you came from and what it took to, for you to get here. When it comes to relationships, you build relationships prior to, currently, and in the future. One of the things I can teach you guys today is credibility is the only currency you have in the mess. Once you lose it, it's lost forever. Good luck on the rest of your season. Navy Chief, Navy Pride.
Greetings from the USS Cowpens. I'm Chief Engelhart, Department Leading Chief Petty Officer. I'm here to talk to you about ethical decisions in regard to teaching the creed. What are ethical decisions? Trust and credibility. Do we have bad apples? Sure. But just remember, one bad apple can be a bad apple for the entire Chiefs mess. Make sure you're making those right decisions. Hi, I'm Mashi Bar Whedon, Command Master Chief of USS Cowpens. Chief Selectees, congratulations. What an amazing accomplishment. I want to challenge each and every one of you to make a positive difference in your sailors' lives and mentor our junior officers to become commanding officers one day. Again, congratulations. Hello, I'm Command Master Chief Erica Lavalais on board the USS John Finn. Congratulations to all the new Chief Selects out there. The importance of influence and honesty as it pertains to teaching to the creed is to make our new chiefs aware how their influence can either build a team up or it can be detrimental to the mission. Your job is to know the difference between the two. Honesty, it's all about accountability, knowing yourself, being true to yourself, and understanding full transparency. If you don't know something, then make sure you say you don't know it, but go out and find out what it is you don't know to strengthen yourself and to strengthen your sailors as well. Once again, congratulations. See you in the fleet. When it comes to motivation and engagement, my favorite line in the creed is, your responsibilities and privileges do not appear in print. That tells me I've got to be engaged and motivated in the mess, so I'm present. And there's a big difference between showing up and being present. I'm present at the meetings, just having my attention, my mind where it's supposed to be at, not distracted and not looking at my phone, but just being present and listening. Providing my thoughts, providing my opinions, and questioning, are we doing this right? Is there a better way? And being motivated to have the sailors do something that they never thought that they could do. That's what motivation and engagement is to me. Congratulations, Chief Selects. I'm Command Master Chief Andrew Zaleski, coming from the Navy's most advanced warship, the USS Zumwalt. I'm going to talk about acceptance as it pertains to the CPO creed. Over the years, the events during the Chief Select season may have changed, but the lessons behind them have stayed the same. Acceptance to me is the point where we as a Chief's Mess are ready for you to join our team. We carry the responsibility for our sailors, our commanders, and our fellow Chiefs to accept you knowing that you will freely accept responsibility beyond that of printed assignment and to uphold our standards and traditions. Don't look as acceptance as the end of your season, but as in opening the door to years of experience that you will continuously learn from and are expected to contribute to.